These are practices that are important in my life as a father, as a husband, as a son, as a teacher, as a human being. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Well, today is Wednesday and it's raining again. <laughs> so I thought I would do something a little bit different. In this video, I want to share with you my top five meditation practices. Now, these practices may not be what you think. So if you're interested in hearing about them, come join me. Before we go through these five meditation practices, I want to make clear that these are not necessarily my favorite practices. These are practices that are important in my life as a father, as a husband, as a son, as a teacher, as a human being. So keep that in mind as we go through these practices. Also, these are not in any kind of specific order. So let's start with the first of my top five meditation practices. Probably one of the most essential meditation practices is Zazen or sitting meditation. How often in our lives do we pause? Not trying to plan anything or to figure out anything and just sit, just breathe, just see, just hear. I find that having a daily meditation practice really helps clarify other aspects of my life. I usually recommend having a daily meditation practice this will really help you become more clear and more attentive in this moment. Because we learn that our thoughts and feelings have no self-permanent nature. They just come and go. So without holding our thoughts and feelings and without pushing them away, we just let them pass like clouds floating past the moon. Then our mind becomes very clear. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Next on my list is driving meditation. Now, this one I picked is because it's something that I constantly have to practice to pay attention to. I would say with driving, this is when I experience frustration the most, anger, other kinds of thoughts and feelings that may not be so helpful. So in driving meditation, I really make a strong effort, like I do in sitting meditation. When strong thoughts or feelings appear, I put my attention to driving. What am I doing right now? And this really helps, not only helps myself and my family who are in the car, but also everybody on the road. Next on the list, cooking meditation. I believe it was Dogen who said that one of the most important people in the monastery is the cook. Because this cook is making food for all of the monastics in the temple so they can receive energy to practice meditation. I had the honor to be the kitchen master at the Providence Zen Center and during the three-month retreats. I found it to be a wonderful practice because first, are we making enough food for everyone, but not too much food where we end up with a lot of waste that may have to be thrown out? Also, I really have to pay attention to chopping, being very mindful not to cut off my finger. <laughs> the most important for me is the direction behind cooking. 
Usually if I'm by myself, I don't cook very often. I love to cook for other people. As Dogen said, cooking for others so they can have energy and use that to help this world. And this leads me to the next practice, eating meditation. Now, of course, I love food. I love eating all different kinds of food. But what I try to pay attention to is why eat? Somebody once asked Zen Master Sung Song, why do you eat every day? Zen Master Sung Song replied, oh, when I'm hungry, I eat. But the student was not satisfied with this answer and said, but I asked, why do you eat? Then Zen Master Sung Song replied, if I didn't eat, I couldn't teach. In some Buddhist traditions, they will chant the five reflections before eating. I'll read this to you. First, This meal is the labor of countless beings. Let us accept this offering with gratitude. This meal is taken to strengthen our exertions. For greed and opinion are strong. Let us deserve this offering. This meal is taken to help us become clear and generous. Let us pay attention. This meal is taken to nourish and sustain our practice. Let us be moderate. And last, this meal is taken to help all beings attain the Buddha way. Let us practice wholeheartedly. So I keep some of these in mind while eating. Also paying attention to the taste, the texture, and also just eating enough to support my practice and avoid overeating. Next on my list listening meditation. Now, this is a practice that I'm constantly trying to pay attention to. I find that a lot of the times, one of two things may happen. First, someone may be talking and I will be thinking about something else. Or somebody is talking and I came into the conversation with some idea about the person or about what's going on. And that really gets in the way, clouding the situation and causing a disconnection from me and that person, which usually ends up in some sort of problem. In this practice, I put all of my attention into just listening which dissolves all preconceived ideas I had before. And this really creates a strong, intimate connection, but also it creates uh, intuitive interaction. It's pretty clear in this world today that we can all use some practice in listening, being open, responding with love, and compassion. So those are my top five meditation practices. I hope this video was helpful. Just remember that meditation just means wake up right now. What is this? How can I respond to this moment with some help? I'd be interested in hearing from you. What are your top meditation practices? Go ahead and put that down in the comments below. I hope you are all doing well, and I will see you very soon.